for a close-up look at all your Concho Valley High School football. This is Inside the Game. Sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to KSAN's Inside the Game. I'm Griff McClellan. We're now in week three of the 2024 Concho Valley High School football season, and we have no shortage of content whatsoever. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Starting with the Central Bobcats, who hit the road for the second consecutive week and still searching for their first win. To Clayton Weishoon Field, ninth ranked, or excuse me, to, let's go over Wall now. Ninth ranked Wall hosting rival Jim Ned tonight, midway through the first quarter in this one. Wall strikes first. Quarterback Landon York rolls out to his left, throws a dart to Kellen. Over who makes the leaping snag, two feet in bounds. Hawks have eight nothing. Same score, still in the opening quarter. Lane Stansberry able to drill this one through from 28 yards out. That extends leads well to 11 nothing after opening play. Second quarter, the Hawks back in the air again. York looking for someone down the field, scrambles out of the pocket, finds Reed Robertson, and lets him do the rest. He makes a couple Indians miss, then finds pay dirt. It's 17 nothing Hawks. Towards the end of the first half, Jim Ned looking to find points. The quarterback scrambling around, heaves out one of the end zone instead. They find Evan Bailey with the interception. Tale of two halves in this one, but Wall scores with under 10 seconds left. Get the two-point conversion to win it 25-24 in a nail-biter. Our Sean Torres joins us live with a recap from this one tonight. Sean? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Clayton Wyzoon Field today. And we had an amazing game. It was a game of ups and downs, roller coaster ride, a very fun game to be at. And the final score was 27-26. Uh, Wallhawks beat the Jim Ned Indians. It was a fun game. Uh, the Jim Ned came out. They were very, very slow. They didn't have no offense in the first or second quarter. They ended up scoring zero points at halftime. But the Wallhawks came out very strong. They scored a touchdown and a field goal in the first quarter. In the second quarter, they only scored one touchdown. But that's not the end of the game. At halftime, it was 17-0, to and Jim Ned knew it wasn't the end of the game. They came out guns firing. They came out like they really wanted to win this game. They scored 24 unanswered points, and until the very end with two minutes left, the ball came back and scored a touchdown. The way they got there, it was a 50-yard pass downfield. They got them to the one-yard line. They hand it off. They're down one point, so they need to go for two to win the game or go for the extra point to tie. What they do, they went and got the two-point conversion from Stan. Ansbury. He did a little out round the corner in the end zone, and they won the game by one point. This has been Sean Tours at Clayton Wiseman Field, and thank y'all. This live shot is sponsored by AFCO Steel. Let's head over now to Shotwell Stadium. Cooper, Evelyn Cooper, that is hosting the Bobcats, each looking for win number one. First quarter, CHS down seven, nothing. Squeaky Christian English does it himself. The 23-year-old quarterback keeper gets Central on the board. And ties the game up at seven. Cooper trying a long field goal attempt here, and it's blocked. Jimmy Norton with the huge play for the Bobcats to keep it tied at seven. And CHS takes advantage of it. Squeaky finds a wide open Christian Moore. Nothing but green grass. Six points for him, 15-7 central. Last minute of the half, Ewing takes the handoff for Cooper. He fumbles. The Bo Bobcats recover in Cougar territory. Final score, 31-27 Bobcats. Head coach Mark Smith gets his first and long-anticipated win with Central. Let's now move over to San Angelo Stadium where the Lakeview Chiefs hosted the La Misa Tornadoes in a matchup of two teams seeking their first win. Lakeview and La Misa meeting up for the first time since 2021 tonight. It's been a little minute. Starting in the first quarter, Lakeview jumping right out of the gate. A quick 21-0 lead punctuated by this touchdown received by Wyatt Henry. Lakeview crowd loving what they're seeing. But La Misa didn't go down without a fight. Quarterback Daniel Ramos finds Celius McCurley who turns on the speed, breaking free for a touchdown, cutting the deficit to 14 points. But Lakeview once again finds a way to respond in the end zone. Daniel Munoz hauling in this beautiful throw for the score. This one turning into a back and forth affair. Lamisa finding the end zone again. This time it's DV Lugo who punches it across. Lakeview makes a statement at home tonight, emerging victorious by a score of 55 42 in a high octane offense thriller. Staying in town, the TLCA San Angelo Eagles hosted the Ballinger Bearcats, desperately needing a win after back to back. Excuse me, back-to-back -back blowout losses to begin the season. This is the seventh straight year these teams met, but the first time is non-district opponents. The Bearcats lead 3-2 all-time with the Eagles taking the last two, but that's not the case tonight. The Bearcats reclaim their throne over TLCA, dominant tonight, triumphantly winning 61-6, making another statement. TLCA struggles continue. Moving on, could the Eagles slay the Dragons? Grape Creek hosted former district rivals Bangs tonight. 
the seventh straight year meeting each other. Bangs held, coming in tonight, a 9-1 all-time series lead. And Grape Creek is still looking for their first win of the season, but they get it done. The Eagles walk away with the win 38-27 at home. We're going to take a quick break, but remember, don't go anywhere because we still have a full show ahead of you for you tonight. More coverage from... All right, everyone, welcome back to Inside the Game. Let's resume with a visit to Sonora, where the Broncos hosted the El Dorado Eagles in an all Contra Valley showdown. Fifth straight meeting between these two, El Dorado has won 11 of the past 12 over Sonora. Could things change tonight? The Broncos won, have won 11 of the last 12 matchups against the Eagles. Eagles enter this game 1-1 one on one the season. The Broncos looking for their first win after an 0-2 start. Opening drive, El Dorado with a nice run to the outside, breaking some tackles, but that drive would eventually stall. Still in the first quarter, Bulldogs with a screen pass on this drive to Dylan Ford. And Dylan gave a lesson on effort this play. A cutback inside, two more broken tackles, and dragging another defender. The next play, Aaron Segura is going to drop back and find Cam Aguero for six in the lead as the first quarter winds down. The Broncos would go up seven at halftime and would walk away with a dominant 41-7 victory in week three. Time for another all Contra Valley showdown. The 2-0 Ozona Lions host the 1-1 Brady Bulldogs. It's been a minute. These teams meet for the first time since 2021. Ozona lead, led 4-3 all time coming into Friday. How would things fare this time on the field? Well, the score is now final, 47-45, Brady. This one's in the books. Ozona falling for the first time this season. And next, we get a renewed edition of Cristobal and McKamey, former district rivals, meeting for the first time since 2017. Both teams entering this game looking for their first win of the season. And it appears the Cristobal Cougars are going to finish just short, falling to 0-3 in the season, losing 19-50. And the scoreboard should say that. I apologize. 19-15 at the moment. And after not meeting between 2004 and 2021, this year marked the third straight season Coleman and Mason collide. The squads had split the previous four at two apiece coming into tonight, but the punchers leading this series 7-3-1 overall, looking, and the Blue Cats looking for their first win of the season. Mason looking to prevent that and does. Mason walking away with a big 53-6 commanding win tonight. Sterling City hosting the Winters Blizzards. Series was previously frozen at one apiece all time entering tonight. In the first meeting of back-to-back, -back, or since back-to-back -back meetings, that is, in 2004 and 2005, both teams entered this game 1-1 one and one on the season, and it would be the Eagles with the dominant shutout win, 45 to nothing. Now on to Miles. The Bulldogs are red hot in 2024, looking to start 3 no tonight after back-to-back -back commanding wins over Sonora and Sterling City. Bulldogs 2-0, Johnson City 2-0. One of the few battles of unbeaten teams taking place tonight. Straight into the action now. Shotgun handoff to Tevin Mead for the quick score. Bulldogs up six after the missed PAT. The following drive after an Eagles fumble. Tevin once again on the handoff outside for the score. Bulldogs up 13 to nothing. Later in the second quarter, if you thought where Cooper Ellison has been, where has he been? Just wait a minute. As the Bulldogs connect on a huge touchdown here, Yancey to Cooper, full length of the field for six. Dynamite. Bull Bulldogs go up 20 to nothing in the first half, and they're not done yet, though. Second quarter winding down. Tevin Mead again. Another outside handoff and another touchdown for the stud running back, his third of the half. Outrunning some Eagles to extend this lead to 26 0 at halftime. Bulldogs end up walking away 3 0 in the season, crushing Johnson City 46 6. Lots of reunions around the Contra Valley tonight, if you haven't noticed. Another matchup of former district rivals. This was the first meeting between Junction and Early since 1997. JHS came in tonight leading the all-time series 4-2. The Junction moves to 3-0 and 5-2 all-time in the series tonight with a 49-12 victory over Early. We're going to take another break, but stay put because we still have some six-man coverage coming up next. You don't want to miss this, so stick around, folks. Welcome back to KSN's Inside the Game, everyone. As promised, it's time to dive into some six-man coverage. Let's start in Bront, where the Longhorns hosted the Verabest Falcons in another all Contra Valley clash. Out at Stevenson Field, Verabest and Bront meeting for the third straight year. Verabest drawing first blood and never looking back in this one. Junior Bryce Martin takes it into the end zone to make it 8 0 Falcons. Later on, Bront quarterback Cole Knight rushing to his left, getting tackled past the 20-yard line. Longhorns marching now, looking to tie the game. A few plays later, this time Knight waltzes into the end zone. Point after try, no good, so it's 8-6 Verabest. But that would be the Longhorns only score tonight previously. Uh, Verabest adds more 
with some more touchdowns. Once again, Bryce Martin having himself a night, scoring out 22 to six in favor of the Falcons. Very best would shut Bront down for the remainder of this one, cruising to a dominant 46 point win, final 52 six in favor of Very best. Continuing, excuse me, continuing with some six man action, Erie County visited Midland Holy Cross, looking to get back on track after last week's horrendous 60 to 12 loss to Rankin. First ever meeting between these two schools, and it's the Hornets who win a thriller tonight over in Midland, 52 to 50. Another high scoring one in the books there. Now the first meeting between Robert Lee and in Iris since 2017. Ira previously won three straight in the series. Could they make it four in a row? They do that. A tough loss tonight to Robert Lee as the Bulldogs win at 44-38. I apologize, the scoreboard is not updated, but Bulldogs take it 44-38 tonight. Scooting over to Water Valley, the Wildcats played host to the Panther Creek Panthers, a matchup happening for the first time since 2007. Another reunion tonight. Water Valley came in having won the last two in this series, but could that streak extend to three tonight? It wasn't a plane. It wasn't a bird. It was a flying wildcat to kick off this game. Water Valley played host this week to the Panther Creek Panthers, a matchup that hasn't happened since 07, as previously mentioned. Straight into the action, Water Valley gets on the board first with a handoff outside to Boston Wise, who does the rest here. Water Valley up 8-0 after the two-point try. The Wildcats a few drives later with another handoff setting up the would-be score. And the next play, Brylan Naylor punches it in to go up two scores early. But a few drives later, the Panthers running game is stuffed and the defense for the Wildcats comes alive. Gunnar Brooks is going to jump into this next play here, if you give it a second, and take it back for six. Wildcats go up 22 to nothing, so three scores just before half. And we close this game out with the victory over the Panther Creek Panthers. Third straight meeting now between Eden and Lometa. Lometa having won two straight coming in, leading 14 to eight all time. The Bulldogs, though, fall tonight to the Hornets, 42 to 12 at home. And again, a lot of renewed rivalries tonight. But how about this? Roby and Blackwell meeting for the first time in 92 years. Yes, first time since 1932. Roby is 2-0 all time. Roby enters this the week 1-1 one one on the season. Blackwell 0-2, still looking for that first win. And at last check, or excuse me, now this just in final, Roby on top, 34-32 in this one. And now back to another first time meeting, this time occurring in Mullen Thursday night. Menard wins it easily 52-7, giving head coach Clay Holland his first victory with Menard. Paint Rock at home, still searching for its first win of the season versus the Gustine Tigers. Paint Rock had the edge entering tonight 2-1 in its last three versus Gustine. This one canceled, however, due to a threat originating from a neighboring county. We have one final break, so don't leave your seat just yet. We've got one more big segment coming up next after these messages. Once again, everyone, we remind you, our Dr. Pepper Trivia Challenge returns for week three. It's currently active. Each week, you can head to our website to answer questions about this week's games happening in and around the Contra Valley. Tonight's question, prior to Friday, when was the last time the Blackwell Hornets faced the Roby Lions? Is it A, 1898, B, more recently, 2007, or C, 1932, or finally, D, 1947? Visit our Contra Valley homepage to submit your answer. Again, our website is ContraValleyHomepage.com to answer this week's questions for a chance at winning a $20 Walmart gift card. Who wouldn't want that, right? So enter now. Now that we've covered all Friday night action across the Contra Valley, let's dive into some notable week three headlines. Central getting their first win with head coach Mark Smith on the road in Abilene. A pretty convincing 31-27 winning, showing signs of life. Christian English having another great night. Lakeview emerging victorious as we covered over earlier, a high-scoring, high-octane affair, winning 55-42 in what turned out to be a back-and-forth battle with La Mesa. Wall finally getting, uh, finally getting it done at home, that is. Head coach Craig Slaughter getting his first win with his new team at home, that is. Wall back on track in the win column, 2-1. to one. Miles, in an all-contra, excuse me, tonight dominating Johnson City after previously two impressive Contra Valley wins, now up 46-6 to tonight, cruising. Week three is in the books, but let's look ahead to week four. Here's some key matchups you don't want to miss. Starting with Central returning home next week for the first time since week one to host the Belton Tigers. Next up, Lakeview traveling west to Lubbock High for a Thursday night showdown with the Westerners 
while hosting its third straight home game, looking to get back in the win column again, this time versus the Monahan's Lobos, and an all-Contra Valley ma matchup once again, featuring the Miles Bulldogs and El Dorado Eagles. That's all for Inside the Game. Thank you for joining us. As always, I'm Griff McClellan. Have a great night. We'll see you back here next week. Catering for Inside the Game is provided by Chick-fil-A. Inside the Game is sponsored by Mitchell Automotive Group.